morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter. Just trying to get my things situated correctly here. There we go. Um, Krista Porter here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the commission's weekly online event. Um, we are a webinar and proud of it. Um, we Encompass Live is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and you can always go back and watch any of our archived recordings. And I'll show you where that is on our website at the end of today's show. We have all of our recordings going back to uh, the very beginning. We started Encompass Live in 2009. Um, and if there are any handouts, um, this presentation will be included there, documents, links to interesting websites related to the session, all of that will be available in the archive as well afterwards. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your uh, friends, neighbors, family, colleagues, anyone that you think may be interested in any of our topics. They're welcome to join us live on Wednesdays or go back and watch any of our recordings that are out there. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, really our only criteria that it is something library related, something libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing um, from the commission, services and programs we offer for you, um, and just anything you know, that we think would be of interest. So some of our titles of our shows may sound a little weird. Um, and not, you're not sure why they're on, but trust me, everything comes around to libraries in the end. I would love to be on my show, <laughs> on our show, <laughs> unless it was. Um, we, uh, and we cover all sorts of libraries. Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. Um, all types, public, school, academic, special, museum, correctional, across the board. Um, we're here for everybody. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do sessions for things, of course, that are more commission uh, focused, but we also bring in guest speakers, both from um, outside of the state and from Nebraska, and that's what we have this morning. Next to me here is uh, Rebecca McCorkendale, who is um, Assistant Library Director and Creative Director yes. here both, <laughs> yes. at uh, Gretna Public Library, which is here in Nebraska. She's one of our uh, local present local state presenters. We're calling this. <laughs> um, and she's also our uh, president elect for the Nebraska Library Association. So incoming, um, getting started to do doing that as well. And Rebecca does uses a lot of a lot of youth stuff. Basically, yeah. And it's I know I don't know if that's in, you're not the youth services librarian. No, but um, no. Um, you do a lot of things there. Yeah, I, I, our library has a very unique situation in that the city decided to grant us a second location right. um, and basically broke our library in half. So the children's collection up to junior level is in one location, young adult on that is in another. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, you have two libraries, why do we need to build a third? And we're like, well, we're one library broken into two. We'd yeah. like to be one library. It'd be better if we weren't, but yeah. you work um, with what you got. Yeah, so yeah, we work, we've worked with what we have. Um, I mainly oversee the children's library. Um, and my uh, boss, my library director, she mainly oversees the main library, but we both bounce back and forth. Um, and it's it's a challenge, but hey, um, I think it's we've never done boring. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> never boring. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Rebecca has a presentation on Gorilla Story Time. Yes. And I'm just going to hand over to you and let you explain oh, what that's all about. <laughs> yes, I am so thrilled that the Nebraska Library Commission asked me um, or challenged me to do this. <laughs> um, in Gorilla Story Times, you have challenge questions, and I just looked at this as a really fun challenge. Um, to try to do this in a, in a virtual format. Um, I've done this quite a few times um, in person, which is a lot more dynamic because there's I'm basically just moderating everybody talking and sharing ideas. Um, so this is a really neat way to record um, and uh, try to get Gorilla Story Times out there more um, because anyone can do this. Um, you know, I'm doing it, you can do this. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, let me get here. What is a Gorilla Story Time? It has quite the name. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, Gorilla Story Time was created by a wonderful librarian named 
Corey Eckert. Um, she's one of the original Joint Chiefs of Storytime Underground. I have their uh, blog site there. Um, if you haven't visited Storytime Underground yet, please do. Um, they, they have wonderful resources. They are some of the most wonderful um, librarians out there. And they have a real heart. You might not you know, uh, agree with everything they say, but that's part of being a librarian. It's wonderful that we can disagree and still you know, uh, work together in this profession. Um, so she came up with this idea after probably attending one too many um, uh, presentations that you know, were just kind of regurgitated. Um, information from a decade ago by, you know, you, you sit in, in presentations sometimes and go, oh, you know, that stuff I, I learned, you know, like, you know, years ago, nothing's new. So she kind of looked at it and went, well, you know, the best resources for up-to-date current information are youth service librarians. Um, and so this is, ends up being kind of a crowdsourcing, um, fun question and answer. Um, brainstorming, just it's it's a wonderful experience. Um, it, it's best when you can do it at a large conference um, where you just get everyone from across the state or beyond um, sharing ideas and just loving what they do. Um, I reached out to Corey uh, just to make sure she was cool with me trying this and she gave two thumbs up. Uh, she was going to provide a video. Didn't happen, that's fine. It's, it's a busy time of year for everyone, um, but I'm just thrilled. She said, yeah, go for it. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the story, uh, the, the Grill Storytime method, uh, you can go to storytimeunderground.org and they have an option up at the top that's Gorilla Storytime and they will give you everything you need to set up one of your own, including challenge questions. Just print them off, cut them up, throw them in a jar, pick them out. Um, so, that said, I bet you're wondering, like I did, how on earth do you translate a real story time into something where it's just me and Krista sitting in a room <laughs> looking at a webcam um, while people uh, across um, North America look on. <laughs> I was like, I do not want this to be a full hour of me just talking at you, um, though that's going to be the majority of it. Um, sorry. Uh, that's but, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I think I'm funny, so yeah, that, that's, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll make it work, but um, please feel free uh, when, when I uh, pose a question uh, to, to send an answer. Hopefully, Krista will catch it. We can share some of those answers. Um, if not, if all of you respond at once, it'll be safe for posterity. You can go back and read everybody's answers. Um, so what I ended up doing, oh. The, the other challenge is a lot of these uh, challenges that are in um, the grill story times are things that have you acted out. Um, obviously, I can't, <laughs> you know, you can give a beautiful description of what you do with your shakers or parachutes, but uh, we can't really afford that live. So um, what I ended up doing was reaching out to a lot of my um, youth services uh, blogger friends and had them submit a video, a short video to me sharing a tip, an idea, um, something that would be a good jumping off point for discussion. Um, so first up, we have the wonderful Miss Meg. Uh, she is the um, blogger at MissMegStoryTime.com. Um, she is an absolute delight. I believe she's up in Connecticut. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and here's her tip. Oh, hi. I'm and my number one story tip is to do everything intentionally. Think about why that story is helping to reinforce early literacy practices in your story type, as well as how you read the children and how you begin to end the story. Why don't you, I just want to um, see if we can get, get a better volume. Yeah, we can turn up the volume on. This. Oh, yes. um, All right, I'm gonna do it this way, just briefly. You hit escape on your slide. There, okay. there we go. Ah, I was almost up all the way. Yeah, we'll do this. All right. There we go. Okay. Your slide is going back to here. All righty. All right. So we should be able to hear things a little better. Okay. Excellent. Um, 
And if you adjusted for her talking, um, you might want to adjust back down just so the next video doesn't blow you out of the water. Um, so uh, based on her uh, tip, what's a tip that you'd give to a new children's librarian uh, to help them you know, feel more comfortable, just get their feet under them? Um, it's really easy to forget if you've been doing this job for a while how incredibly scary it is to go before uh, a room of uh, children and their caregivers. It really, I, I did theater for years and doing story times in a very, like, you know, it could be like three kids, but they were in your face. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's a lot more personal than anything I did in theater, you know, where everybody's out in this darkness. Um, though that would be a really interesting story time. <laughs> Um, let's, yeah. just, let's go back. Can we get her to be play again? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let's, let's see if we can see if we can trigger that again. Here we go. Oh, hi. I'm Miss Knight, and my number one story time tip is to do everything intentionally. Think about why that story is helping to reinforce early literacy practices in your story time, as well as your songs, how you greet the children, and how you begin and end the story time. Hey, Miss Meg, thank you for the video. Um, you are a sweetheart. Uh, was that, did we so, get any, yeah. any? So do everything intentionally was her tip. Think yeah. about how that story is good and everything you do around it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Uh, I don't know if you can just, yeah. Let's see. Nothing we can do with it. Okay. <laughs> I, I um, asked a couple of my staff members to share a couple tips just to um, give you an idea. This is uh, the fabulous Adina. She is uh, one of our technical services librarians. Uh, she helps out with Bibliobop, which is our uh, preschool and toddler dance story time. Um, it, it's amazing. And she also works at uh, one of the branches of the Omaha Public Library, um, the A Abraham. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a uh, youth specialist there. So here's her uh, tip for beginning uh, youth service librarians. Stamps, a great behavior modification tool. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, that's how would you do that? <laughs> the, um, you stamp the kids. Stamp, yeah, we stamp the hands. Uh, we try to get a bunch of kids to line up and put their hands down, which you know we just didn't get much of a rush yesterday. Um, but. Stamps really have been, it was the most crazy thing when I began, um, I shouldn't say crazy, I apologize. Um, it was the most interesting thing um, when I began um, kind of learning the, the youth service world, so I had planned to become a children's librarian and then um, ended up on the managerial side of things, which didn't surprise me, <laughs> but I'm thrilled I get to stay um, kind of involved with the children's programming. Um, and I never thought of getting a different frame of Adina. <laughs> that is a hot dog. That's a, that's a hot dog. We're celebrating Bob Willems for our themed uh, December League, where we celebrate an illustrator. Um, and so the kids get a hot dog and a cookie stamped on their hands when it's time to go. And that's a key thing. Um, we have saved more meltdowns uh, for, for kids and parents by saying, hey, do you want to stamp on your hand? It's, you know, you do that when you get to leave. And kids that have been like, you hear the, the, the I don't want to go. Kind of thing. And, and we will chirp up and say, hey, would you like a stamp on your hand? We do that when it's time to go. And the kid is so excited to leave at that point. And we've gotten a lot of parents like do the thank you as they're walking out the door. Distraction. Um, distraction. Oh, yeah. Redirect. We're, yeah, I'm trying to redirect. Yes, it might be reinforcing bad behavior. But it keeps at least a temporary meltdown down, and um, it really kind of makes you know leaving the library um, less of a sad thing because they get that little bonus they get to take with them. Um, mm -hmm. I gotta say, half the time they immediately put hand sanitizer on after it, which oh, okay. <laughs> you know, removes the. Or as my boss said, uh, half the time the youngest ones go ah, and it's gone. Um, so just be aware, you know that's gonna happen. Um, they have to stamp both hands. Um, I, I, I will stamp anywhere with the parents approval, you know, I've done cheeks and foreheads. Um, so that has been a wonderful thing. Um, and kids really, it's, it's better than the lollipop at the bank. Um, and then uh, speaking of my boss, this is my director, Chrissy Reed. Um, I asked her for a youth services tip and this is what she gave me. Have bubbles. <laughs> 
have, have <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> okay. We've joked that we should get um, shirts to sell that say, um, I'm just here for the bubbles. Uh, and that's for our bibliobop. Uh, Miss Adina always um, has a little bubble um, gun she uses at the end. And oh, you know, it's, it's a little child array, but it's wonderful. Sure. Um, but yeah, um, that was the one she was shared, like, go for it. Um, and please know, you know, you might feel like you're sharing something that everybody knows, but there could be that one person out there that you've just rocked their world. And yeah, it, you never know where the background of, of what uh, people are getting. And a lot of times, these uh, lessons and information you learn in real life. Um, so don't ever, you know, second guess yourself that you're giving something that everyone knows. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them here says a toddler rave. I'm using that. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. Um, yes. Please, uh, photos and videos. Uh, <laughs> send them my way. I'd love to see that. A successful story time ends in a toddler race. Yes. That, <laughs> well, well, that would be a whole separate <laughs> webinar for any of the slides. Yeah. Um, awesome. <laughs> okay. Our next uh, guest is a Bryce Kozla. Um, she works out in the Washington County. Okay, I'm good. WCCLS, the Washington Cooperative County Library System. Oh yeah, um, and she helps all the youth service librarians out there. Um, she is a wonderful advocate for people with disabilities and um, has, has taught classes on uh, libraries and dealing with disabilities, whether it's staff or patrons, and just she just follow her blog um, if if you'd like some wonderful um, tips um, and and other information, uh, but I'll go ahead and play her video. Hi everyone, I'm Bryce. I'm a youth services librarian in Oregon, and I'm also the author of the blog, Bryce Don't Write. Um, I was a disabled child who grew up to be a disabled librarian, uh, so I'm happy to give you a couple of my favorite tips about kids with disability and story time. One, families experiencing disability uh, can be hesitant to attend events designed for the general population because they're used to their needs not being considered. Um, when promoting your program, a phrase like all abilities invited will signal to families that you're expecting to see kids with disabilities in story time too. Uh, make sure to let your families know that at the beginning of story time that if anyone needs a break, they can leave and come back or come back next time. Two. You may see kids uh, with fine motor or large motor impairments in your story time. Um, when planning movement songs, think deliberately about what each action is asking the child to do. Um, make sure to switch up the kinds of movements so no one uh, goes too long without being able to participate successfully. Um, for instance, for every itsy bitsy spider, add a row warrior boat. And three, uh, don't single, single out anyone who looks like they're having trouble with um, with a rhyme or a movement. Um, next time you see that kid in story time, it might be kind to change up that song or rhyme or movement. Oh. Okay, that's it. Hope you have a good day. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Bryce. Um, wonderful, wonderful tips. Um, again, can't recommend her enough as a blogger or as a teacher. Um, if you find out she's doing a uh, online course, sign up. It's worth every penny. Um, free advertisement for Bryce. Yay! Um, I do have a comment or okay. someone has a suggestion from um, the audience. So if anyone does have, that's what this is, the session here about is about sharing. Yes. As, as Rebecca said, normally then in person, so people I'm in the audience, I'm just yeah. shouting out yeah. things or whatever. Oh, it's fun. So, um, <laughs> That's what we need you to do, but online. Um, so type into your questions section. Um, if you have a microphone and it's hooked up and you know it's working, you can do that as well. Just type in, I have a microphone, please unmute me, and you can um, share your ideas that way as well. Sweet. Um, but Caitlin says, have an outline for story time, but be flexible. Mm -hmm. Go with the flow of your crowd. Yes, that's wonderful. And I think kind of relates to also what she was just saying here. About oh, right. You need to know your audience or, yeah. um, and realize you don't know your audience necessarily until they walk in the door. Exactly. And I think that's a, a skill, you know, if you're blessed with that naturally, yay you. Um, it, it's taken me a long time to kind of figure out how to deal with those unexpected moments in story time or even at, with, with uh, patron services. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's it's a it's a skill you can work on and improve on. Um, and I'm a type A personality, so to to be more flexible was a lesson that took a while. <laughs> you know, um, it's one thing to know it, and another thing to to feel comfortable doing it. Um, so yeah, uh, anyone else? Have I just don't want to go shooting no, past. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Someone does say, um, some of our staff here at the commission, we don't, because you had on the first slide there about um, scarf songs, uh -huh. share your scarf. She says, we don't have any scarf songs and we desperately need one. Oh boy. So, so they want to know what is it, you know, they want to see a, an example of a scarf song. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't <laughs> have one. Um, I, I will give you a resource um, a little bit later for uh, online where you can learn some beautiful scarf songs or fun scarf songs. So um, just We'll put a pin in that and come back to it. Um, and again, you know, if any of you want to to uh, hop in um, and uh, uh, share one, we can happily unmute and you can describe what you're doing with a scarf. I could try to mimic it um, with nothing, and you guys can use your imaginations. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a really good resource uh, near the end um, that if you're not aware of, um, I will have made your month. <laughs> not just day, I will have made your month. <laughs> um, so, so. I didn't ask this question. Oh well, yes, how do you make families of all abilities feel welcomed either in your story time or your library space? Does anybody out there have any thoughts on this question then up there? Anything that you do specific, particularly in your library? Yeah. Or maybe you just uh, work with universal design and really, you know, try your best to make everyone feel welcomed. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's really um, a good thing to keep um, that in the back of the mind um, and, and not make assumptions. Um, there was, I took that course with Bryce and uh, one thing I learned that I think could be an issue with you services librarians because we are so friendly and outgoing um, is um, infantizing someone with a disability where you talk to them like they're a child um, assume confidence talk to them as you'd want to be talked to at whatever um, age they seem to be um, and you can adjust from there but don't you know be, be aware that don't do your sing songy voice that you reserve for toddlers um, um, and that's something I've never really thought of before. Um, so, if there's nothing, oh, no, be, oh yeah. there's a long thing, so it takes a while to get yeah. sure. Um, <clears throat> we have an area with no screens, which is separate from our more tech heavy area. It happened by accident because oh, they had a broken one of those all machines. Oh, the yes. um, but families have really appreciated having both options. Oh. So a screen an area with all the computers and one that's um, right. well, a little more yeah. sensory, um, um, kind of neutral. That that's a really good idea. Um, we have such limited space in our our children's library that it's unfortunately our story time is right next to the computers. <laughs> um, so um, we're keeping universal design very much the forefront as we start. Hopefully, knock on wood, um, fundraising for a new library space. Um, Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yay. Um, I'm gonna hop on. If if you your question pops up a little late, we we will pause and get to it. Yep. Um, Type in whenever you think of something. Yeah. Uh, this next one uh, is Tess. She's a librarian out in um, was, uh, ah, Maryland, and uh, she actually changed my life. And we'll get to that. Unfortunately, this video got cut off, and I didn't realize it until last night as I was editing things. Um, but I think you know where she's headed um, by the end of it. And it's the, the cell phone quality. Um, it's a little bit of a jumbled video. But here we go. Here's Tess. Hey, you're really great. I'm at Brunswick, Maryland. And I'm a
and then where it stops. So yeah, you can ask the kids to come up and like play the ukulele. play, you know, strum or hit a note. Mm -hmm. um, it really, uh, I stumbled across. I put down the uh, oh no, let me go back. Um, she did an article on Ask Elsk back in 2012 that I, I stumbled across, and it was about. Um, music and story times focusing on the ukulele and I had a, a flashback to my childhood where there was a music teacher probably in first grade that had um, an auto harp and I thought that was the most magical thing in the world um, and so when I wanted to add music to a program typically we had to deal with a pianist and all that I was like I don't feel like booking a pianist um, I went online found her article and immediately bought a ukulele and <laughs> And it really is. You can play well over 30 songs if you've learned three chords. Wow. Yeah. And even um, we do a song at the beginning um, of our uh, some story times where it's, you know, we wave and sing hello, we wave and sing hello. That it's just one chord, C chord, one little, and you're good to go. Um, one unexpected thing I've done um, with that, um, sorry, Rice and Tess. <laughs> um, that um, I've taken the ukulele to offsite events, um, like a business fair. And yeah, and we actually um, uh, circulate ukulele, so it's something we do at our library. Mm -hmm. But also, then, yeah, when we, we sign up parents for library cards at those events, I'm, I'm showing the kids the ukulele and even teaching them, you know, one chord. Um, and that keeps them fascinated and engaged while the parents do all the boring stuff. And then the family has a fun memory of, you know, wow, that, that was a really interesting booth, um, you know, and what an experience. And wow, that library, they, they check out ukuleles, what? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, okay. You can check out anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and now here's an answer to you get your question, okay. how do you incorporate music in your story time? Um, Shelly says, I have found the ukulele really helpful in outreach story times with kids who are not accustomed to being read to. They are more familiar with listening to music. Not all children, I guess, have been read to, which is kind of sad. Aww, but, yeah. um, also, she says, I am supremely average at it, and they don't seem to care. Yeah, no. <laughs> kids, no. They think you're magical. It's a tiny guitar to them. Yeah. Um, and it really, if you're enthusiastic about it, um, even the parents don't care. They're amazed you're brave enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. Play something in front of these kids. And actually, and Caitlin has this research, I don't know if you know about this, a web, a URL she put up, storytimeukulele.wordpress.com. So a out. specific website just for doing, using ukuleles in story time. Yeah. And there, there are um, a lot of story time um, ukulele players. There's, um, I'm going to blank on her, but there's a wonderful um, youth service librarian that does teaches uh, story time songs on YouTube. Um, I think if you look up story time ukulele, you can find her quite easily. Um, and uh, oh, we're, we're going to check that out real quick. I'm going to see this. I just want to make sure see what it is. Yeah. Simple chords for children's songs. Perfect. Yeah, song index about story time ukulele. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that was a resource I wasn't aware of. So awesome. Thank you. That was Caitlin. Uh, yes. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So from out there, storytimeukulele.wordpress.com. Yes. Um, if you want to get into doing this in your own library. You, you should give it a go. It, it is a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Who do we ah, we have the wonderful Mary from out in Colorado, and her blog is Miss Mary Library, uh, dot com. Um, she also is one of the founding joint chiefs of Gorilla Storytime. Yay, yay. Um, and here's her tip. Hi, Storytimers. My name is Mary, and I just wanted to share with you something that has helped me a lot when um, giving early literacy uh, reminders during story time. Um, I kind of like to call them reminders rather than tips or um, whatever else you might choose to call them, because then it sort of implies that the um, parents and caregivers already know the things you're telling them. You're just reminding them of something they already know, um, which makes, for me, makes it sound a little less um, like we're uh, telling parents what to do. And as a childless librarian, um, you know, it might seem strange that I'm telling parents uh, something to do to help their children uh, learn. So uh, 
that's one reason why I like to call them reminders. Um, but what's helped me when sharing with parents is um, thinking about the things that really get me excited about early career senior learning, especially the brain development pieces. I find that so fascinating. So it's really easy for me to transfer that enthusiasm into uh, what I'm sharing with parents. Uh, because rather than me, uh, you know, telling them, like, uh, I know that with you, you really should know this stuff. I'm saying, isn't this cool that this is what's going on when you're doing finger play? Isn't it great that just by singing a song, you are helping your child get ready to read? So um, and I hope that I'm passing that enthusiasm on and that it encourages parents and, and caregivers and wants them to continue what we do in story time at home. So thanks and enjoy your session with Ms. Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mary. Um, that was wonderful, wonderful tips. Um, the, that was probably a big thing that I struggled with when I was, I, I cover for story time or um, between children's librarians, I was doing the majority of the children's programming. Whew. And um, it, it, it really dealing with parents because I'm also a childless youth service worker and I've had that thrown in my face um, when, when having to deal with issues in the library. Um, the uh, before we get to the question i'll give a quick other shout out to brooke who is a blogger at um reading with red um she kind of changed my world and i haven't had an issue with this since uh, learning this tip from her um when parents will sometimes use the librarians as scapegoats of like oh you better not do that or miss rebecca will kick you out or oh, miss rebecca yes. will be angry at you um and that's just a punch in the gut and yeah, I mean I understand why they're doing it but um, you know I, I don't want fear of any of our workers you know a, a reason why a, a kid should behave a certain way so her suggestion and one I've used which is wonderful is I will go up um, to that family and say hi friends I bet you didn't know that you can't run around on the furniture or whatever it is um, that they're doing. yeah that they're doing I've, I've used that with mom I said you know I don't think I called her friend but I was like hey I, I bet you didn't know that we have a policy you can't use your cell phone in this library um, that particular one she was like oh I knew it <laughs> um, but yeah I was like okay well obviously it was an emergency so um, I'm, I'm glad you're aware of it and then I backed away um, <laughs> So, okay, for early literacy, how do you teach parents these skills? Um, what ways do you empower them, um, make them feel um, like they are giving their children the best? Mm -hmm. um, that's something I think um, as I went into youth services, um, I started story time just as a fun um, story time event. And as the years went on, I, I learned how much early literacy is in there. Um, how he's modeling things without even realizing it. And now, to go back to what Ms. Meg said, uh, anything I do is very intentional. Um, and that includes even if I'm just being goofy. Um, it shows parents that it's okay to, to be silly um, and, and still be professional. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you know, kids, they're, they're, they, you, they learn from play and they learn from things. And it's, it's I don't know if this is the best way to describe it, but it's, but it's you're being sneaky and underhanded by doing something fun that, that they learn from. Right. And that's how it works. That's how, I mean, <laughs> and some parents don't realize how, that. Yeah. You know? And it's all this, you, you don't sit down and, and say to a, a three-year-old, now we're going to learn yes. how to do this <laughs> and make it all you know, yeah. serious. You just do something and, and poof, they've learned something. Uh, we do have a comment, uh, there's a new one that came in, but I just wanted to read the one that was from, related to the, the music one that yeah. we just were doing. Um, the staff said, librarians need to remember that kids do not care about voice quality, they just want to have fun. So sing away with them. Yes. Just, yes. You know, <laughs> uh, sing out of the top of your lungs, yeah. if you like the song, do it. Let <laughs> it go. <laughs> Um, and then Shelly has this, which I think is responsive to what you were just asking okay. about. Um, I have a take home that follows the five areas of every child ready to read. Wonderful. So there's things that you can hand out. Um, it addresses each section as 
Um, we read, we played, we sang, so that parents can continue our activities at home. Oh, so that's kind of nice. Do your story time, do your things, and, and, and then give the parents something. So kids get a stamp, and then the <laughs> parents get <laughs> a takeaway. Homework. Yeah. <laughs> get yeah. something like, here, if you want to do this yourself, so they don't have to remember what it was. Right. Maybe yeah. They have a little cheat sheet. That's a, that's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, or, or, or you could even offer, you know, handouts to, to your tab group. Mm -hmm. um, if they babysit at all, you know, empower the, the yeah, next generation. Yeah, yeah the get them involved with doing it outside the library. And so yeah. this is, I learned this from my librarian friend. Yeah, yeah. nice. Um, uh, another resource I want to mention, ALSC has a um, ALSC. Um, they have a, um, a group of posters and handouts called Babies Need Words Every Day. And it touches on all those early literacy points. Um, we have them hung up in our bathrooms. Um, I've had some um, preschool uh, caregivers uh, ask where I got those, and they're beautiful. Check them out. You can download them, print them out. Um, it's a wonderful resource to use, and that's Babies Need Words Every Day. And I believe Brooke from uh, Reading with Red um, was part of the committee that put that together. Uh, so shout out again to Brooke. <laughs> Okay, I just don't know. Oh, um, this is, um, yeah, Tales for the Tiny. Um, and I'm going blank on her name. Oh, she's another founder of the uh, uh, Storytime Underground. Julie, this is Julie. And uh, she did hers more in the format of, you know, talking with parents how she does uh, early literacy skills um, for uh, during story time, but I'll just play it and you can hear her wonderful tips. Hello, this is Julie Crabb, and here's a tip I like to share in story time. Toddlers love to mimic what's going on in the world around them. Right now at home, my kid likes to put on pretend deodorant because she sees her mom do it every time. <laughs> uh, Make sure that your kid sees you reading. Check out a book just for you at the library today. We're always happy to help you find one. Or let your kid know when you're reading on your mobile device, even if it is just tweets and status symbols. The more they see that reading is a part of your daily routine, the more likely it's going to be a part of theirs. Thanks. Yay, and guest spot by uh, <laughs> uh, Elvin Gerald. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that I have seen wonderful interactions with parents and kids. As a parent, I think there's a TV commercial where the parents are walking around and describing things and that they seem like they are having some kind of a breakdown, but it turns out they're actually talking to their babies and toddlers. Um, and I've, I've seen some parents do that and I usually applaud them. Um, when in the library and uh, uh, I will tell a quick story where a patron was doing that and as she checked out um, she was talking to her child about the books they were checking out one had a turkey on it and the mom was like um, oh what kind of animal is that and the kid was like turkey <laughs> and the mom's like yeah what does the turkey sound like and the, the kid was like ah and the mom lets out the most beautiful and perfect dead on turkey call I have ever <laughs> heard. I almost fell out of my chair. And it wasn't quiet at all. It was the whole, <laughs> and I, I can't even do it. And I was laughing so hard. I think the woman had like 30 cents in fines. I was like, wave that. Wave <laughs> those fines for that performance because it was, I, I'm still talking about it. It's been at least a year. Um, so. Yeah, she she lives on in my heart for you know being willing to be willing to be that silly um, to help her kid grow. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and I like um, Julie's comment about even on your phone that reading is there's all different formats of how you can read the and um, reading from books is one reading on your tablets mm -hmm. or in a device or something. Um, Reading, that it's, uh, road reading signs, it's reading, you know? yeah. yeah, and any way you can show your, your children that this is this is cool, that what I'm doing here mm -hmm. is what I'm doing on my phone, what I'm doing on my tablet, when I'm sitting here, I'm reading a, reading a book on my tablet. It's yeah. the same thing as you reading that book over there, and hey, yeah. maybe you can trade, you can read yeah. your book. You're we'll like, there's, your children. <laughs> there's, there's more things than just games. Yeah, yeah, that, you know. show them that that's another, um, what is it, it's not, it's like a tool. The content, not the, con not the container. Yes, the phrase that I was trying to look for. Yes, like it. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, during our summer reading time, 
uh, our program, you know, we just encourage kids to record how much time they read per week. And if they read a little bit each week, they get to keep a book, uh, pick out and pick, keep a prize book. And um, there are times where parents are like, oh, you didn't read this past week. And I'm just like, well, did you, you know, go on any trips where there were billboards? Did that, you know, I, look for any way the child's been reading. You know, did you read some information on TV? We don't want to be that that stickler of, of you know has to be a book you know um, just reading anytime is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think the next one ah this is um, Melissa Mel. She is uh, the blogger at Mel's Desk, uh, but it says Mel's Desk, but it has the actual um, web address there. Um, so uh, she shared with me a, a presentation, part of a presentation that she gave for, a, um, a, I believe it's an online course, um, just showing how she um, presents uh, a book to children and parents um, during a story time. So I'll play that. I want my memory by John Clancy. Who do you think wants to hear them? Who do you think wants to Maybe the scare? He doesn't have a hat on now. Do you think we'll get one way to the end of the book? We'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. Grown-ups, when you ask your child questions about the book before you begin, your child learns how to make guesses about what happens next. This helps them become a good reader because making predictions increases comprehension. So talking with your child will help them get ready to read. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, she just gives a little tip. Um, I think in the real world, she'd finish that whole book and then maybe, you know, mention that tip to the parents um, afterwards. Uh, I don't think she would stop the role of, you know, like asking the kids question, and now I'm going to put it down and give some information. <laughs> um, so it's just a good tip. At the beginning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to, to give out, or that would be a great thing to put in uh, the handout. Um, like that was suggested earlier. So it's nice. So you would even in front. So this is you would do this in front of the kids and parents mm -hmm. together, and you yeah. know, kind of like just. It's not just story time for the kids. It's kids right. some info to the parents. Yeah. And and kids, they know they'll ignore that part. Like, yeah. What? But they're thinking about yeah the the story you just yeah. read. Wait, yeah. hat? Where's the hat? Yeah. The hat. <laughs> yeah. And if they find out they're accidentally learning by playing, they can use that against their parents in the future. <laughs> So <laughs> you never know what those kids will absorb. It's pretty much everything. Um, so, oh, this was a, an email I received because they did not want to share a video. I couldn't figure out what library she was from. I'm guessing in Nebraska. So um, Lisa wrote, um, I just love occasionally including a wordless book. I pick it up and look at it and then slam it shut with horror on my face. Oh my goodness, oh no. Look again in the book lean in conspiratorial and say, there are no words in this book. Pause and look around. Uh, do you see any on the floor under your knees? Oh my goodness, what will we do? Then I know you will have to come and help me one at a time. You can tell me what the words should say about the pictures. Raise your hand and I will pick someone one at a time. The youngsters are so concerned that there are no words and that they have fallen out of the book. <laughs> it is so fun. I only do this a time or two um, in a year. Surprise is the key to getting the reactions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I That's love that. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know, you know, we've done wordless story. books um, in story time. We have a section for wordless picture books as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought in a million years of, of doing that. that I can just see little Rebecca being like, whoa, and having my mind blown that these words fell out. And then, you know, being encouraged to use those narrative skills. Um, and, you know, by helping the story, uh, your storyteller um, um, make the story up. And it would be really fun to have somebody like record that, at least the audio, and then put the story together um, mm -hmm. and then give that out like the, um, um, have just a fun little booklet with the stories that the kids make up about the book. I'm just throwing that out there because that just occurred to me. That'd be so, so neat. So you can do a story time without any story. Well, that well, pre written. written story, yeah, yes. yeah. You know how kids are. I, I just, when she wrote this. They make up their own stories anyway. Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, I, I went to her my children's librarian. Hi, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. To, uh, <laughs> to maybe do this sometime because I think it would be so much fun. Um, and then maybe by the end of the month, we could put a little booklet together with all the, the different um, 
story time stories that the parents could pick up and have fun with. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, uh, do you have any special storytelling theatrics that you use yeah. to draw in your attendees? Yeah, what kind of creative uh, acts do you put on? Yeah. <laughs> shows um, you present yeah the the oh that book i mean this will age me of when i was doing some story times so the the bear snores on bear sleeps on i can't think of karma is it karma wilson but anyway as you're reading i you just start to fall asleep you know and then start snoring <laughs> and wait until the kids wake you up oh man that it, it really sometimes the parents don't know what to do when they finally realize oh we need to wake her up bear <laughs> snores on the bear yeah. snores on it was probably yeah. lovely yeah. Mm -hmm. um so i always love doing you know gags like that um where you know either the book's making me sleepy or acting out the the words of the story um there's one time <laughs> uh, yeah okay i'll tell it um I took Pigeon from the Mo Willems book and inserted him into Run Turkey Run, that like the turkey asked for a little vacation, so Pigeon agreed to step in and did a very brief stint in this book. It was just a few pages where I kind of attached Pigeon dressed up as a turkey. Um, and the kids, I had one story time where the kids were just blown away. They're like, whoa! Um, you know, what is Pigeon doing there? And it's the next not right, it's not yeah, 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 no, and then. <laughs> And then the second group, like the next day, didn't care. They could have cared <laughs> less. I, mean, I still told the story, um, but I, you know, encourage parents you should check this book out sometime and see how it actually is. Uh, you know, I know it's modifying the um, author's original work, um, but it's the one time I did it, and I, I personally had a blast, um, especially with one group that really got into it. Um, and that's you know, goes back to what was in the beginning. You never know what your audience is going to be like from day to day. Yeah. You know, the same, the same topic, the same story, the same theatrics that you do. Mm -hmm. One group is all up for it, mm -hmm. and another one's like, it's that whole be flexible. Yes. <laughs> the, the lesson of yeah, don't take it personally. Yes, too. Yes, that is a okay. so very <laughs> important tip for new uh, new children's librarians. Um, don't take it personally, you know. Um, you'll you'll get a good feel for the room. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, you know, you're gonna have the one kid that stands up and, you know, says something wildly inappropriate, declaring it to the whole library. Um, <laughs> use your imagination. Yeah. yeah, and you just gotta roll with it. Um, I'm not that fast on my feet. I'd be like, oh, that's nice. You need to, can you sit on your pockets and, and we can share more at the end of story time. <laughs> And I've learned kids are fickle. Mm -hmm. They will hate you one day and think you're the best thing in the world the next day, and mm -hmm. you don't know what happened. Yep. And it's okay. Just go with it. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. And that, um, I have a, a tough time with names, remembering names, um, mm -hmm. parents, kids, it doesn't matter. That going back to Brooke, um, saying, hi, friend. It's the most, you know, amazing thing um, to kids that, like, oh, she thinks I'm her friend. <laughs> you know, there was a little girl that was so shy um, that I, every Saturday morning I'd greet her, oh, hi, friend, happy to see you again. And she would just kind of, <laughs> didn't speak to me. And I asked her dad, you know, what was her name? It's Hannah. And now I know it's Hannah, but I still, most of the time, will say, hi, friend, how are you doing today? And, and she just... It's wonderful, and it takes the pressure off of me for remembering things. Um, uh, so that's a little little tip in my toolkit um, that has really changed the dynamic I have um, with anyone in our um, library. And I think. Uh, oh yeah, what are some of your favorite online resources? We've got the the one you have the one. The daily one was listed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, Storytime Underground. Dot org. Um, go to their um, favorite, like their blog roll. Um, you'll find wonderful, wonderful, wonderful resources there. Different blogs sharing um, different topics. Um, I, anytime you go to a blog and you like it, look at their blog roll. Um, it, it's a great resource. And then I just immediately copy paste the URL to my um, RSS feed, and then I just have tons of information at the fingertips. Um, so. <laughs> Going back to the scarves, um, if you haven't heard of Jay Brary, um, 
I mean, you need to be aware of January. Um, they have a YouTube channel where you can subscribe and get notified when they have a new video. Um, there are two lovely Canadian uh, youth service librarians, and they do all the hard work for you and have different story times, uh, story time songs to present. And they have scarf songs. You can look it up. They yeah. have, yeah. Um, they do sign. I believe this one. They teach in the sign language, and I'll just show you uh, what to expect with them. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is a weather themed song, um, perfect for the fall or the winter, and it's called Come Under My Umbrella, but we're going to be using some American Sign Language to sing this song. So here we go. Come under my umbrella, 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 come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. With thunder and lightning, and thunder and lightning, come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. Come under my umbrella, 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 come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. With thunder and lightning, and thunder and lightning, come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful resource. They are just so open and, and sharing and just they're they're wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and it can hopefully give you a little more confidence when you know practicing um, if you're not that comfortable with singing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and making it so you're not just sitting there singing. They give you ideas of yeah. what to do. Um, so you're even including, you know, sign language or scarves or shakers. Mm -hmm. um, Does anybody have any other sites that you guys use for resources? Any online websites that you use to get more ideas? Uh, type them into the questions section and we can um, share them. We'll have all these collected, um, any that are not in the yeah. presentation, yeah, um, for you afterwards and we can make sure everybody has access. Um, knows what they all are. Yeah, I think I have one more site maybe. Ah, this is, I'm, yeah, uh, you would think Bryce pays me, she doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> but every summer for the past uh, two, three summers, um, she has done something called the Summer Reading Hype videos where she asks um, the different bloggers, youth service librarians, um, anywhere in the world to, to create a video to directly to youth service librarians or just the librarians and public librarians in general for summer reading programs, just to either tips for um, stress management. Um, mine usually have very little to do with actual learning anything. It's just me being silly. Um, and I'm hoping I'm making people laugh during the summer because uh, it can get intense. Uh, this is the Show Me Librarian, uh, Amy, and she had a wonderful tip. Um, so this is from, I think, the yeah, 2016, yeah, Summer Hype videos. I, they're all recorded on uh, Bryce's blog, so go there, type in uh, Summer Hype, and you can look at the backlog of these. So here's Amy's tip. Hi, friends. I'm Amy Kuster, and I hear that it is summer where you are, and that means summer reading. Now, summer reading is a bundle of fun, but it can also be kind of exhausting. So I'm here today to give you a little bit of a pep talk, and I brought with my trusty binder, so I want to go over with you five things Leslie Nope taught us that can help to power through an amazing summer reading club. Or if you happen to be watching this when it's not summer time, um, it's also good for any other big project, initiative, presentation, unity concert, or binder project, design your to-do list. So let's get started. It's summer reading. What do you need to remember to be awesome? Number one, no accomplishment is too small for celebration. I'm sure you just did something awesome today. So you should A, pat yourself on the back, and B, like, tell a coworker. Or if you see a coworker who did something awesome, celebrate it. Say great job. You know, have toast with a, a can of pop or a seltzer water. We really like seltzer water here at the library. I don't know. Think about how you can celebrate and make it something that's just part of your routine so that you're constantly in a really good mood about the things that you're accomplishing. Number two, dance breaks and impromptu karaoke can totally change your mood. So if you find yourself being a little bit cranky, uh, maybe find that boombox, take out the kid's CD, and put in something that you love. Sing, dance, jump around. And find yourself getting particularly upset with your coworker, I hear it's really useful to put on you and start the fire. <laughs> Number three, waffles help. 
<laughs> so waffles in general are amazing and delicious, and you don't really need any other food. But this is also a metaphor. Basically, eat breakfast. It's something your mom told you to do. You don't always do it, but when you do do it, you feel better. So do that. Number four. Give your teammates and yourself ridiculous and true compliments. All right, so a lot of things that Leslie Oak would say to her best friend Anne were pretty crazy, um, but really they just made everybody feel better. They made Anne feel better, made her feel better. So think about how you can give those compliments to yourself and to your coworkers. And remember, you are a brilliant, creative starfish. <laughs> Last but not least, no one accomplishes anything alone. So remember this summer that you're not going it alone. You may feel isolated, you may feel bombarded with questions and kids and sticky fingers, but you're not doing it by yourself. So look to your team, rely on your team, ask for help when you need it, and celebrate together, because together you are going to offer an amazing program for kids at the library. Those are the five tips from Leslie Nope that are going to be usable for an amazing summer reading club. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful summer. Bye. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Amy and Bryce. Uh, so that gives you a feel for what those um, hype videos are about. Um, so if you've always wanted to try doing videos or anything, um, Bryce puts a call out for submissions um, sometime in the, the early spring. And um, it, it's just a real fun thing to be a part of. She shares it with her uh, library system first and then makes them um, available to the public at large. Um, and it really is a good stress reducer to get a fresh video every week to be like, ooh, there's a new video. Um, and uh, even if they're a little silly, you can at least find uh, a grain of, of something uh, to make your summer a little easier. Um, <laughs> so you can zoom in. Um, we do have a, oh, a, yes. a, a suggestion. Um, you'd ask for other websites. Nice. Um, Gail says Thrive After Three. Yes. Com. yes. Has a lot of good ideas for story times. That one. Yeah. Thrive, I follow Thrive After Three. Yeah. Thrive After Three. Engaging programs to keep kids coming back to the library. That's wonderful. Um, yep. Yeah. And they um, sometimes host the flannel Fridays. That's can't remember who started the flannel. Was it Kate? Storytime Kate started flannel Fridays. Um, if they do any kind of flannel boards, look for flannel Fridays. It'll rock your world. Um, yeah. So you get ideas for new ones. Yep. Too, you know, oh yeah, with, with diagrams and all that stuff. Or, and they have links on theirs too. Flannel Fridays, mm -hmm. Story Friday. Storytime Underground. Oh yes. Thrive Thursday, school age programming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and after school clubs for kids. Yeah. Yeah. I really I love living in this day and age where we can get so much information and share information. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do a, a little final plug of, you know, my, my whole library career changed when I started a blog. Um, and it, it became more youth services oriented when I kind of I made a really fun poster. I'm like, you know, maybe a couple hundred people will see this in my community. I spent a lot of time on this. Why don't I share it with the world at large? It's one less thing another librarian would have to do, you know, um, for prepping for whatever event. Um, and a couple years later, um, I have all these wonderful youth service um, blogging friends um, that I've met uh, or have yet to meet, uh, but that they've changed my life, uh, life in, in many, many ways. They've become friends and mentors. Um, so if you want to maybe you know, think about starting your own blog, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I can give you all the tips and tricks I've learned by stumbling and falling flat on my face uh, throughout the years. Um, it, it really is a wonderful experience. Um, yes, I still get nervous when I hit the publish button, <laughs> and that's, I've been doing this five years now, um, but um, please consider it, you know, you have things to share, and you never know what's going to really affect someone in their life, um, whether it be at their job or just personally. Um, so please reach out to me, my email is halfbody at gmail.com. Um, that's probably the best place to write to me about blogging. Um, otherwise, yeah, I have my other email addresses for work and the uh, NLA. So, um, and you never know, you, you, you're maybe posting and not getting lots of comments and things. People, I mean, you know how you use the internet. You look at something, read something, and use it, but never really let that person know and that's okay yeah oh yeah um so don't don't be discouraged by well there's not all this conversation right i remember way back when when the blogging first became started there was you need to have a conversation you need to always be having back and forth mm -hmm. and it 
in some places it does work that way, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. I you know I, I do so much things where I find information, I save a site, I use some things that somebody mentioned, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if I feel guilty, but I never, I don't always say, hey, thanks, I use this. Right. I mean, it's just, that's why it was out there, it was for someone to use. Right. And as librarians, that's what we, we are all about sharing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's another way. sharing into library loan, and this is another way of just sharing what we do. Right. So that other people can use it, so. Um, Put it out there. You never know, you know, who's looking at it. Yeah, it's another form, you know, of sharing or storytelling. You can look at it that way, you know. Sure. I feel like I'm telling the story of what we're doing at our library every month. Um, I'm backlogged on that right now, but um, I love bragging about my library team because they do amazing stuff. Um, it's become more about what they do versus what I do. I just, I'm the conduit to which <laughs> I get to share with the world um, the stuff I get to be a part of every day because of them. Um, so. Uh, I think that kind of wraps things up. Uh, thank you all. Yeah, thank you all so much for um, joining us. Um, thank you to the brave souls that shared. Um, again, feel free to reach out to me or Krista if you have any questions. Uh, and when would this be posted for posterity and future? Um, we'll say tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Uh, if, yeah, sometime yeah. tomorrow. Um, we uh, the recording has been done, and you'll have I'll send out a link to everybody, letting you know yeah. when it is available for that with all the information. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. All right. So thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for Rebecca for being here. Oh, thank you. Um, we're gonna pop out of this. We have escape. Yep. We're going to go back to here, and if you could um, type in Encompass Live since mm -hmm. you've got the keyboard. Um, yeah. And if you, there we go, that's our website. And if you, um, you can either go to the commission's website and use our search to find the page. If you use your uh, search engine of choice, Google, um, Encompass Live, so far we're the only thing out there on the internet called this. So Excellent. you'll only come up with results that are something the entire page. Uh, this is our Encompass Live page. Um, the archive, of, like, as we said, uh, We'll be with processing and getting it up to YouTube and everything will be posted up tomorrow. Um, and I will email everyone who registered for today's show and who showed up today. It will be posted over here in our archives. These are our upcoming shows, but our archives are here on this second page. And as I, it'll be at the top of the list because the most recent ones go at the top. So this was last week's. So we had the recording, a link to the presentation, and she also happened to have a separate handout. Um, so we'll have your PowerPoint, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, go totally. here. Yeah. The recording will be on here, so you have links to both of those where recording is um, available. And this is where all of our other archives are, as I mentioned. We have them going here, going back to the very beginning of the show, so back to January 2009, which is a lot, yes. <laughs> we are working on getting a search feature added to this. It's a work in progress. Right now, you can just kind of do it. Control F and search the page, but um, so there is something. There are very, there are many things here that yes will be out of date as far as you know because things were done maybe yeah. ten years ago. But um, we're librarians, so we keep an archive of everything. So and you might be able to glean something exactly. unexpected yes. out of a topic you never thought mm -hmm. you'd find something. But everything is dated, has a date, so you'll know if something is old. So just look at the date, make sure you know what you're watching is something from five years ago. So um, just take that into account when you are um, looking through our archives for anything older. Um, so that will be available tomorrow. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is how to choose your news, educating college students on identifying bias. Um, short description, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about here. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, and this is specifically Aaron Painter, who is from UNO, University of Nebraska at Omaha, has, they came up with actually a particular um, workshop for their students to help them um, wade through all of this. We're all struggling with wading through mm -hmm. um, what is fake news, what isn't fake news, who thinks it's, it's fake and is wrong, who thinks it's fake and is right, um, everything. So this is something that they developed at the library and she's going to share how they've done it there so you can use this either in your university or actually this is something that could totally be used in even a public library. It's not specific to that um, because of the topic. Um, 
this is one that is um, coming from the uh, academic point of view, but it applies to everybody pretty much. So, so please do join us for next week's show or any of our other topics we have here. I've got I've started booking dates for January for 2018 already, so um, look for more of those coming in. I usually book only a few months out, so I can be right on top of things. So I'm in conversations with some more to fill in there in the middle of January, so keep an eye on our schedule. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do pop over there and give us a like. Um, if I do post notifications, uh, like here's a reminder to log in for today's show. Um, when the recordings are ready, I post them on here. No, I don't want this on here. Um, that's the one about this week. There's a recording from last week's being available. So anything new, I'll always add it here to our Facebook page as well. So um, if you are a big a user of Facebook, um, like us over there and you'll be notified of what's going on with Encompass Live. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you, Rebecca. Oh, thank you, Krista. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for being here. And hopefully we'll see you next time at Encompass Live. Bye-bye.